Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. And I'm Tristan Grace. Yeah, yeah. We're in. I always do like a yeah. Ooh. Well, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> cool. Well, we... Dude, stuff's happening this week. I found mittens. How cool are these mittens? They're pretty stylish. And that's warm. It's really cold here. I anyway. found a lab coat because, again, cold as balls. <laughs> yeah, we're a bit mismatched, but it's cool. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, this week, um, talking a little bit about robot automation in warehouses. That's pretty awesome. There's a thing called Kiva Systems. Looks cool. Um, using uh, supercomputers to actually simulate life on Earth with all sorts of different you know, yeah, cool. variables and functions and stuff. And Microsoft has a programming language for genetic engineering of living cells. Like, nice work, Bill Gates. Even though you probably have nothing to do with it. Still? Awesome. <laughs> uh, my, my three. Uh, there's a flight simulator, but you're the actual plane. They strap you up and you fly around. Um, next one is uh, the quit Facebook day. Uh, discuss that a bit. And then there is this artificial astronomer that's classifying galaxies and all manner of science. Keep it's kind of cool. Some pretty interesting stuff this week. Oh, some of this? Yeah, let's get started. Oh, this Keep video up. is sweet. Like, uh, there's been tons of videos on uh, Singularity Hub and a lot of other um, techno sort of Singularity Robotics uh, sites out there. Mm. There's this one called Kiva Systems, which is a company, uh, it's based in the States somewhere or other. Um, what they basically have is they set up these warehouses with these, these floor plans. Um, and on the floor there's these barcodes which the, the robots flow around on. Um, the, the robots are just these tiny little uh, orange things that just go around. And what they do is they just pick up these shelves and carry them to you. And so, the thing was really cool in the sense that uh, what you could actually do is link it with your sort of website um, ordering system. Um, an order comes in, uh, what you can then do is a person, it just needs one operator, can sit at this uh, particular station, robots come up with the packaging items, you then say, okay, I need this, 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 and this, and this, because um, it automatically, automatically yeah. comes through. The robots then go out and gather those shells with those products on them, <laughs> the operator then it takes off the product from the shelf, scans it. If it's the correct item, um, the, sh the shelf goes back to where it originally went from. And they put it in the box <laughs> and they press a button. That's cool. And when the box is full and ready to actually be, it's got all the items that it needs, they just press a button and, you know, it, it knows, it puts it on a conveyor belt or it, it takes away yeah. to be shipped. Dude. And then you have the same process when you actually have to ship it out as well. Like, it's, it's incredibly awesome. Like... It must. They're saying it actually speeds up three times uh, the productivity. Which is just simplifying a whole factory yeah. for a single person. A single person sitting there controlling a whole factory. Yeah. That's and not only that, awesome. it's um, it's also dynamic in the sense that it will automatically, based on uh, order volume, it will automatically arrange the location of these particular oh, shelves. Oh So, for example, like if you obviously want the shelves that have the most uh, products being ordered from. So yeah. the products being ordered the most, you want those shelves to be really close to where the order station is. Yeah, so it can just quickly so drive it to you. does that automatically. That's Rearranges cool. the warehouse automatically. Yeah, you wouldn't even need someone to actually go down into the warehouse. You no. just have, you chuck all your products in this black box and you just access it from your terminal. You're just yeah. like, yeah, okay, cool. Get Send me this product. I don't need to walk <laughs> around anymore. God, that's awesome. Yeah. I really like to, I'd like to have a whole really factory cool. just full of stuff. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I could just say, oh, I want this now. And uh, there's some big companies <laughs> using them. Um, Zappos is one I remember. They're the lighter people? Like, no, they're the shoe people. Shoe. They sell shoes online. They're a big ass company. Oh, okay. Cool. Really cool CEO, really cool. Um, what was I thinking of Zappos? I was thinking of yeah, Zippos. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. No. Cool. Yeah, go watch this video. Um, it's really cool. And I think this the whole um, ro roboticization, if that's the word, of the warehouse and, and manufacturing is really picking up now. Like. Yeah. You don't really need people in warehouses. Like, what are people doing in warehouses, really, that can't be That's replaced not. by, yeah, machines? Well, the biggest thing is just arm movements, but now they've pretty much got that it's kind of sorted cool. out, yeah. Well, like, it's just shelves moving around. <laughs> Gonna have a nightmare about that tonight. Yeah, I can just see them, like, boxing you in and crushing <laughs> you with shelves. It's great. You just, I'm yeah. sure they have a warning system in place. So you, you, put, okay. you, put, well, you put all of your friends in there in just one giant warehouse. I'd like to talk to this person. They come and take it up. Why are you <laughs> doing this to me? Put no, he's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> you go grab your next one. I've got to talk to you or they're hanging. Like a saw style. Yeah. Movie. Except with a like, factory full of, well, warehouse full of people. <laughs> Tasty. Cool. What's well, that, that kind of leads on to that. Not whatsoever. It does not lead on whatsoever <laughs> to this being a, a flight simulator, but you as the plane. And this is just a quick little stupid video. There's, there's nothing major in 
nothing major here, but it's just the idea, I think, it's just awesome. It's this guy who's just hooked up on, like, pretty much a crane, and he's got some VR glasses on, and then they've strapped his arms out like that onto a plane, onto, like, a wing, and he actually flies by tilting and pretending he's the plane in the thing. And I thought this was absolutely brilliant, along with this other story I found. Um, oh, this was on Techzilla, by the, by the way. Um, this other story, which I've lost in my millions of tabs that I've got open here. I had another one about a brain-powered robot. Just the very fact of getting into you becoming the machine, rather than like, you know, you're just the pilot going through it, but to actually physically take on the attributes of the machine that you're controlling, I think it's awesome. It must mess with your head a bit. It yeah, would after a while, like, yeah, like, imagine that, you know, Predator drones and all of that, like, at the moment it's a pilot, you know, you've got the joystick, you're flying like that, yeah. why not actually be the machine? Like, as you move, that that's how that it works. Cool. So it's like the same thing with the plane here, that, like, by having your arms out, like, you're actually, like, the, um, the actual wings and all that, as you fly and move, it can only be as you are. I think, I think that's kind of epic, you could do it with a car, you could... What about, like, a, a VR-controlled Iron Man? Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah, That'd that be would cool. be the ball, but like more and more like that. That just you becoming the machine, rather than you controlling the machine, or you like sitting in a pilot's chair. That there's no need for pilots anymore. Like to actually have all of that support mechanism, you become Ooh. the machine. <laughs> like I mean, all of the systems are set up. Like all of our flight a aircraft and all of that are all of our machines are actually us to be in it. But since we don't need to yeah. be in it anymore, why not you become? Well, apparently, our uh, commercial airliners are just. Uh, they're landed by AI programs now. Yeah, pretty much. It's not... The, the pilot doesn't really have much say in it. Yeah. <laughs> they're just there just in case. But just thinking, imagine flying on a flight where there was no pilot. It was just automated. <laughs> well, you'd be, you'd yeah. freak out. You'd just pace on and just sit there with a hat and look official. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped it here. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think it's just something to watch. Like, there's nothing incredible here. Like, it's a cool little video. It looks like lots of fun. But instead of actually piloting a machine, you become the machine. That'd be pretty cool. It's cool. Anyway. No death involved, so it's always good. Yeah. Well, that's it. You crash this plane in a flight simulator. You're just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I just saw a guy get um, his uh, ultralight in flight Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 or X or whatever the latest one is. He got it into space. That's kind of cool. It's just like this little thing that he just flew around the Earth for like hours. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Cool. Uh, shall I do one? Yes. Uh, scientists... I love it when hey, articles always. Scientists. I love how articles always start with scientists. I'm a scientist. <laughs> I've got a lab coat. Uh, scientists are planning to use the largest supercomputers to simulate life on Earth, including the financial system, economies, and whole societies. Oh, sounds pretty easy. It's not really new, <laughs> you know. Off the whole Earth, like come on. Incredible amount of variables. <laughs> inputs, but, dude, it, even if they can get like just a fraction of it simulated, oh, it's powerful stuff. Um, <laughs> we want to simulate the Earth. How do you sell that idea to investors? <laughs> <laughs> you say, you say, well, we can predict where all the markets are going to go. Yeah, that's a good way to sell it to investors. Yeah, well, we can, you know, you can make money off this. <laughs> um, the project called the Living Earth Simulator. They put a lot of effort into that name. Um, <laughs> it's part of a huge EU research initiative uh, named Futuric. 